this weekend, a rare women's featherweight fight on Canada Day, and like a Canadian band, Saskatchewan's own, the Sheepdogs. Who's going to win this fight? I don't know. Matt, we have Yana Santos taking on Carol Hosen. Why do I say that, folks? It's because you probably think, Craig, well, you talked up Carol Santo or Carol Hosa every single video. You were excited when she was on the four fight win streak. She lost to Sarah McMahon. Is all hope lost? No, because I thought that Hosa was going to look really good when she took on Lena Landsberg. She got dropped in the first round of that fight. She landed an illegal knee in that fight. She still wins it, though. And then Hosa, her last time out against Norma Dumont, she she loses in some of the exchanges because she gets held up against the cage, but when she's able to land, she was out striking Dumont to the tune of a big time knockdown in the third round. And when Dumont gets up, what is Hosa do? Grabs underhooks and holds Dumont up against the cage. So the reason why I don't know who's going to win this fight, and I really don't, even going back and watching the tape study, is because Hosa, for as good as her striking is, look at the fight that she had against Dumont where she drops her underhooks and goes into the clinch where Dumont excels. Or the fight that Hosa has where she's able to get the fight down to the ground against Melissa Gatto, who's on this fight card. There's a lot of Spider-Man memes on this card. But Carol Hosa in that fight gets it down to the ground and then gets caught in an armbar against Gatto, which ultimately gets Gatto into the UFC three years later. Gets signed off that win, but three years later. Carol Hosa is one of these fighters that I have a hard time with. And for Yana Santos, why do I think she could beat Carol Hosa? It's because, well, she throws kickboxing combinations because she will land the kick at the end of her boxing combinations but she too like you saw against Stoyarenko or the majority of Santos wins she'll grapple or she'll hold the fight up against the fence and land strikes in the clinch and we saw that cause issues for Santos against Irene Aldana who recently fought for the title but it's against the upper echelon fighters that Santos struggles with so when you look at this one rankings on the line Albeit they're at featherweight, now there's no champ in either division. Yeah. I don't know what this fight does for either fighter. I know it was thrown in together on short notice because originally it was Yana Santos against Macy Chasson. But if you look at this fight in a vacuum, it's a tricky one to try and break down. There's a couple main talking points I want to get to. And the first one being, I think it being contested at 145 favors Yana Santos, at least slightly, because of the reasons you bring up. Santos is the more grapple-heavy out of the two, and if she is able to get on top of Hosa, I just don't know if that's the position Hosa is going to be able to get out of convincingly in a lot of spots, because Santos isn't a one-note grappler. She will go from full guard into half guard. She will progress through situations and not just stay in that full guard position. And Hosa can be active off her back, but I do think it gets the grappler of Santos' level. It's just going to be a little bit more difficult for her to get back up to her feet. With that being said, though, Yana Santos gets a bloody nose the second she walks into the cage. Like, she does not eat damage well at this stage of her career, and even in fights where she wins, she does accept quite a bit of damage on the feet. Oh, the and Marion Renault fight. Exactly, that being a shining example of it. So, I just think both these fighters have very specific ways they can get this job done, because if Hosa can make this primarily a boxing fight, Santos will throw kicks from the outside to kind of keep her opponent at bay, but I wouldn't say Santos is throwing big damaging shots from the outside with her kicks. There are a lot more volume accumulators more range finders. I'm not saying she has bad striking, but her striking is more of the type of a Christophe Jaco and less like her husband at Tiago Santos. So I think for Santos, she can have success on the outside with her volume numbers, but I think if Hosa can make it ugly, get on the inside, use her elbows, they do find themselves in the clinch because that's the position Santos likes to go for a lot of her takedowns from. I think Hosa, it's odd because it might get to the end of the fight where Santos completes three takedowns. She might throw 78 significant strikes and Hosa might get one takedown, you know, just from like a weird clinch. She might only land 50 strikes, but the strikes that Hosa lands, I do think are going to be a lot more damaging than the one Santos is. Yeah, and we've seen Carol Hosa in her fight against Lena Landsberg. It was Hosa outlanding Landsberg in terms of volume in the first round, landing really good shots. But again, it was a right cross that Landsberg landed that sat down Carol Hosa. So it has been weird so far. There is, again, the reason why I don't have the, the little asterisk next to the way in for Hosa. She fought three months ago at Norma Dumont against Norma Dumont. At Featherweight, it was announced by WMMA Rankings on Twitter on June 17th that Hosa would be taking this fight against Santos. So short notice at a PRVT for Hosa. Yana Santos still out of ATT. And it's kind of funny because in the office to break the fourth wall, there's a poster for UFC 239. And look at that. Tiago Santos staring us down. Wow. PFL That was zone. a great poster. That was a good poster. Uh, but you look at this fight, Matt. Hosa is favored in the matchup. Yana Santos, the underdog. You see it on the screen. 4-4, four four, the UFC record for Santos. 
She's got that Justin Gaethje in her, UFC 222, just main eventing for the title against Chris Cyborg and taking her down in the first round. But you consider it what happened for the rest of that round. She did not win that fight. Uh, Carol Hosa, 2-1 to one favorite. We have a look at the topology votes. Surprise to us there to you. I'm going to say over two-thirds have Carol Hosa. Uh, I'll say over. All right. And it is over. 76% have Carol Hosa at a 628 total votes. 92% by decision for the 24% that have Santos, 86% by decision. And I like Carol Hosa with the volume numbers that she's able to have. You saw her fight against Laura Procopio at the time, now Laura Fritzen. Where has she been? But she got the win there uh, in impressive fashion. We've seen her be able to land really good volume numbers in these fights. I like the takedown defense enough. Again, she was the meal ticket for Sarah McMahon to go to Bellator to beat Arlene Blenko, big win. But for me, I do like Carol Hosa here. I've also got Hosa in the matchup. If Yana had the type of takedown Sarah McMahon did, then maybe I would favor her a little bit more. But you, that's whoa, the, whoa, you mean like Tanya Evinger type? Well, it just, for Santos, it is a lot more of the judo type throws, the takedowns from the clinch to where she'll go body and then try to go for the trips. Sarah McMahon was an Olympian. Like, you don't get better at wrestling than Sarah McMahon all that often. So I do think the style of takedowns with which Santos goes for is going to make them a little bit easier for Hosa to defend. And it's going to get her in that boxing range where Hosa can have a lot of success. So I agree with you. I have Carol Hosa. You want to be the most uncomfortable you've ever been watching an MMA event? Go watch that post-fight interview that Tanya Evinger does with... Uh, wow. Yeah. Laura Sanko? Laura Sanko. It is something. Matt, in this matchup, both of us going with Brazil's short notice replacement... Carol Hosa to get the win at Featherweight. Let us know down below in the comments section who you have. Some big time fights on this card, including Sean Strickland taking on Abu Smagomedov. In the main event, you're not going to want to miss it. Keep it locked in with Fight Night Picks. We always say, let's get into it.